afternoon, everyone. It is 5.30, and we do want to call this meeting to order. This city council meeting is being reconvened from Monday, June 4th, 2018, for today, Tuesday, June 12th, 2018, at 5.30 p.m. to continue a public hearing, well, to have a public hearing, on the concerns that you have, the concerns from our citizens on the adoption of the resolution to accept real property, and that property being the Woodman Community Center. On this afternoon, we do want to hear from as many of you as possible. We do realize and understand that you're here because you, you care, and it is, pleasing to be able to see so many of you turn out this evening. So we do want to begin the public forum. Um, the goal is for us not to be here all night, but to be able to hear your feelings on the right side, the left side, pros, the cons, but we just want to hear you because without any question, your voice matters. How you feel, it matters. So um, on this afternoon, we will begin our public hearing. Our goal is to be able to hear from everyone within um, an hour or so. It may be an hour and a half, um, but do consider the number of people that are here. I would ask Ms. Hicks if she could provide um, a list of citizens who desire to speak. We will begin um, with a presentation from the city. And at this time, the public hearing is open. And I yield the floor to our city manager, Tony Sears. Thank you, Mayor Pritian, for allowing me the opportunity to speak on behalf of the city. The city wants to thank you for everybody coming tonight. I want to reiterate the words that Ms. Solomon said, is that this is not about uh, the city saying X or Y or Z. This is an opportunity for you to come forward. A lot of you are, are here, whether you're for or against, and are, again, reiterate what Ms. Solomon said. It's, you're here because you care. You care, no, regardless of how it goes one way or another way, you're here because you care about our community. And, and on behalf of the council myself, I can't tell you how much it means that you've come forward and that you're here today. I want to talk a little bit about how this process started, uh, a little bit about where we are and how we got to where we are at. About April of 2016, somewhere around that time frame, I was invited to a meeting with the county manager in which the woman asked would the city and the county be interested in purchasing this facility. That's about the first time that any, we had any inclination that the woman may decide they want to do something else with the operation of this facility. At the time, we did not entertain the purchase of the facility. We said that we didn't think that the city was in a position or the county was in a position when we were looking to purchase the facility. Around Thanksgiving of this past year of 17, we were reapproached again and asked, what about a donation? Would the city and the county be willing to receive a donation of the facility debt free? And we said, well, that is a much better option than the first option you gave. We'd be very interested to have that consideration. And that's when we did. So the first notification of when this was going to happen was in November. The first time that the two boards were notified was in January of, that, of 18 of this year. There was a joint meeting between city and county. Uh, meeting, and the purpose of that meeting was to talk about whether you were going to combine services or not. And as an addition to that, both parties were told jointly that there was going to be some conversation about whether we wanted to accept this. At that time when we met in November, the woman, the woman was so far along that they actually presented an initial set of sale documents. That's how anxious they were when they came up to talk about having this donation. Uh, the city went through those documents. Uh, our attorneys here, Mr. Cawley, we went through it. Uh, we have been having conversations with the woman about different things inside the contract. The contract actually was initially proposed to the city was not accepted. 
we didn't think there were some terms and agreements in there that were in the best interest of our community and we continued that negotiation with the woman in order to get what we thought would be the best negotiated position for us in order to receive be in receivership of this facility and that's the document that we have that we produced last uh this past monday we believe that we have a fair document that is that it protects our interests, protects your interest, and that's how the kind of process kind of began. So now we want to get into, well, whether you should or should not accept that. And regardless of which side you're on, what is really important to understand, and I think this body is, is an understanding of that, is that the Woodman, in order for the city to receive the Woodman, there has to be one condition that's above all else. And that's that no tax dollars will go into the operation of this facility. I don't believe there's a member of this board here who is in favor of having a conversation in which we receive the Woodland Community Center in which any of the city of Kenston tax dollars go into the operation of this facility. When we begin to analyze this financially, what was paramount to this council and this body was to make sure that this facility is financially stable and that it can be self-supporting. And that's really where some of the conversation in the community begins, is whether or not this facility is self-supporting, whether or not it's making enough money to, to carry itself without additional outside revenue. On the back table, we've provided what is the actual audit, and I, I, I'm gonna be completely honest, we only made 25 copies. There are way more people here than I must admit I anticipated. But we have some of those in the back. Uh, if you raise your hand, we'll try to get them out to you if you'd like to get up and go get them. But these are, are our audit numbers. These, are the, these aren't projections, these aren't estimates, these are the actual audits. So in case you don't know, per state law, the city of Kenton, as well as the community center, because it's something that we operate. Again, we don't own the Woodman. The, the relationship they have is Woodman Foundation owns the facility. There is an agreement where the city of Kenton operates it on their behalf. How I would think about it is kind of like a franchise agreement. You don't own McDonald's, you just operate the facility in the manner in which they dictate. So one of the questions that you have is, is this financially suitable, is it sustainable? And when you start looking at the numbers, what the city is willing to admit is that you take the first full year of operation, which is 2014, that those numbers that you see in 2014 were unsustainable. I love analogies, I apologize just the kind of person I am. If you remember about two years ago, they opened up a Chipotle in Greenville, on Greenville Boulevard. There were people who were standing outside for hours to get into Chipotle to eat there. If you go to Chipotle today, there's no longer an hour line waiting to get outside. And we knew that the new of the community center would bring people who were interested, who were curious about it and wanted to come. So when you look at the numbers for, 20, for 2014, those numbers are great. And to be honest, those numbers exceeded our expectation for that year. When we start looking at the numbers, what we think is a more comparable number is the 2015 year number. So if you look at 2015 to 2017, there has been a decline in the amount of revenue, membership that have been here at the Women Community Center. Uh, the women doesn't, the, the city doesn't argue that fact. There has been a decline. Even with the decline, it still has been profitable. We have made adjustments internally in the operation. One of the reasons that we're here to have this consideration and, and we're willing to have this, and, and especially after I make this, the statement, the revenue has been declining. We have trimmed some of our expenses to match that. As you ask, okay, if, if the numbers are declining, and you say it's profitable, how do you know that it's profitable? If you take the statement that the woman sent out is that they have received $2.1 million to make their payments, the city does not have access to their payment information. That's their loan. They make that payment. But we know the money that we give to the count, what we give to the woodman. The other thing that we do at the end of the year, and you'll see that in the financial statements, if you actually have, if you actually happen to get a copy, and you turn what I consider page three, you'll see in there it's going to say wow payment. And the wow payment is essentially the positive cash flow that the community center has. We return back to the woodman again. We don't own the Woodman, we merely operate it. The city is in a break-even standpoint. We take the money, that the profit from here, and we return that back to the Woodman. And the fact that we've been returning that back to the Woodman lets us know that we see the expenses, we see the revenue, and the fact that we have money to return back to the Woodman does give an example that we believe that it's profitable. 
Has the number declined? Absolutely it has. So the next question you may have is if the revenue is declining and your membership isn't what it once was, why would the city be interested? During the five-year operation that we've had jointly with the women, we've had disagreements with women. You probably have disagreements if, if you're married and you have, you have a significant other. You have disagreement about household expenses. Uh, sh should we have a dog? Should we not have a dog? Is it time to replace the faucet on, in the shower? Those are those types of conversations about things that you do and about the household operation. They just have simple disagreements against. We, over the course of five years, believe that we've, we've offered some suggestions that the woman ultimately did not choose to do. And that's their right to be the owner of the facility. Some of those things are, we think that the organization side could be better. One of the things that we really lobbied for is when you talk about the newness and you get the 2014 numbers and how many people showed up, but the reason they showed up is because it was new. What you don't have in operation, which is six years later now, is you don't have anything new at the water park. And how do we continue to reinvest into that water park? We think operationally, programmatically, from program standpoints, we, we've had disagreements about what the entrance fee should be coming into the woman. Those are things that the city hasn't ultimately had final decision on because we weren't in the ownership position. And really the conversation that this council has had is if we were able to have full control of it, do we think that we could change the statistics that have been happening to make it positive? Now, I understand some of you out there say, well, government can't run a business efficiently and effectively, and I understand it, and I appreciate that. I too am in government, and I wish sometimes that we could do things and operate facilities and, and other agencies and other aspects of our financial book more efficiently than what we do. Even if we don't change the efficiency of the community center, we believe that there is a time period that's going to exist before you would get if the number, if the trend doesn't change and you make no changes to the functionality of the community center, we believe we're, we're three or so years off before you'd get to a break even point. What this council, I believe, agrees is that if at any point in time that this facility cannot be self-sustaining without the use of tax dollars, I think this body is prepared to reevaluate the position and what to do with the community center. This brings up another question. One of the questions is, if the Woodman decides to close today, and I appreciate that there's conversation about whether or not the Woodman would actually do this or not, the only way to find out whether the Woodman is actually going to close the facility is to do nothing. One of the reasons this body is considering this donation is, is the value that this, or, that this facility has on our community. We bring in a lot of outside tax dollars. We believe that there's a lot of individuals who visit Lenore County and Kinston because of this facility. We also believe that we have a lot of our people in our community who don't get the opportunity to go to the beach, who don't get to go to Raleigh because a trip to Raleigh to them is something that you only do every so often, maybe less than a year. And having something here like this provides an opportunity for those individuals to have experiences they may not be able to get elsewhere. The city would love nothing more than for the, the actual agreement that we have now to continue forward. Where the city is happy with the agreement, we wish not to alter the agreement, we prefer it to run forward. And individuals say, well, didn't you sign a 30-year agreement? Absolutely we did. The city signed a 30-year agreement that had, after the first five years, an out clause. That is in the agreement. That's not a change in the agreement. That agreement was signed in 2010, 2011, somewhere back in the original agreement that has always existed. And what the woman has done is decided to exercise the option after the five years to terminate the agreement. They're not there, to, they haven't said terminate, but that's really what they're talking about. When they're talking about donating it to you, they're really not wanting to continue that. And one of the reasons they're not looking to continue that is, and I'm not here to speak on behalf of the woman, but let me say this, I am not here in defense of the woman. I can only tell you what I've been told, and feel free to question whether I'm speaking based off what they tell me or not. The woman believes that they've had some changes in their philosophies. We are now on the third CEO of Woodman since this project was signed. They've had some philosophical changes. What they're not doing is they used to do summer camps. You know, Woodman started back in the 1940s and they did summer camps and those types of things and they aren't continuing those programs anymore. They've also wished to terminate this program as well. And I think this body is concerned about what does it mean to the community? What, what does it mean in attracting different people and how are we going to go out and, and, and do, do people remember what this facility was before the Woodman was built? It was Smithfield, right? And, and how did that look before the Woodman came? 
how many of you out there now are concerned about how Vernon Park Mall looks and wish something could be done to Vernon Park Mall? Part of that is if Woodman closes the facility, what happens to here? Do they sell it? Is anyone able to buy it at the prices they're willing to sell it at? And at the entranceway of the set, as I refer to as the 70 split, what does this look like if no one's here providing that service? And I think really what the council is trying to do is not operate and run a business, but is provide the service that the facility gives back to the community. And I think that's the dilemma. I wish we could say that, we, how do I want to phrase this? We're very happy with the agreement. And Woodman's not forcing the city to take this, but they have a decision to make. Either the city can accept it, or they're gonna make a different decision. And the city, if the city doesn't accept it, then someone else, again, is controlling the facility that is in our community. The owner of the Vernon Park Mall does not live in our community, nor does he live in our state. That's all I'll say about that. And I think this council is concerned about control of the interest of the facility. Madam Brooklyn, I'm happy to talk about anything else that you or the council wish. It's, I was just trying to give a, a brief overview of the statement about where we are. Mr. Swenson is asked to talk a little bit about the formality. Um, further request to Mr. Sammy Aiken, we were concerned about those individuals who were not able to get to the facility tonight. This meeting is being recorded. We also have news media here who's recording us as well. We ask that anyone who wants to speak, please wait until your name is called. We need you to come to this center podium here. There's a microphone there. We ask you to use the microphone uh, when you're speaking and addressing the body. Anything there? With that being said, Madam Pro Tem, I turn it back over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Madam Clark, will there be anyone to speak tonight? Thank you, City Council. I, I agree with a lot of things that Tony says all the time about different things. We've had several meetings, not about the woman, but about other things going on in the city. Some of you know me. Uh, what, and I agree, I love it the way this facility sits right now with the agreement that's as it sits right now without any changes to it. It's a great facility. It does us good. Both of my sons have their families registered here. Both of my sons worked for the rec department when they were coming up. And I've seen a lot of what's going on. I've watched the city council meeting from last week. I wasn't able to attend. I was at a Marine Corps League meeting. And in the last uh, week and a half, I've done a lot of research, done a lot of reading. I've read all of uh, Jay Mac Doherty's posts on Facebook and Eric Rouse's posts and Mr. Perry's posts. And I, and I did some other reading also that I just wanted to pull out. And this was from local government in North Carolina. The book was by Gordon Whitaker, somebody you may have had in your, in your uh, Chapel Hill uh, public administration courses. And he listed different types of public services, water supply, solid waste management, police, fire, emergency services, social services, cemeteries, electrical grid systems, sidewalks, streets, street lighting, traffic control, and a safe urban environment. He lists nothing about recreation and parks. And that's interesting because I was a phys ed major. Before the Marine Corps grant me out of civilian life, I was a gym teacher. So I played sports in high school, and I played two sports in college. I love sports, I love this facility. I love the way it's set up originally from the city of Kinston with the Woodman and the Woodman with the city of Kinston. But what bothers me is as I look at different numbers, over the last five years, the city of Kinston is losing 115 citizens a year. And this is not going to stop. 
It's not going to stop. It's been going that way for the last five years, 115 citizens. And I was in uh, Mr. Sears' budget, all 700 some pages. And on page 293, I was particularly looking at Glenn's rec department and the numbers in that. And I saw a number that just kind of caught my attention on 293. And it was in the uh, fiscal year 1718 budget that Mr. Sears presented to the city last week. And from 2014 to 2018, that budget, just in the rec department, the salary and benefits, rounded off was $140,000 more over four years. It was actually 138 something. I got the number written down. But roughly 140,000. So I'm looking at a city of 20,000 people. We've got 12 recreation facilities. Do we need to own another recreation facility? for 20,000 people, even though if it's sustaining from now until forever, and it won't be, it just won't be. So my feeling is, let's keep it the way it's going. I don't want to change it. Do I want to take the chance that this will add to that county tax increase that uh, Mr. Hill's talking about? I think the chances, if I were a betting man, if, if Vegas put it up, the bet would be, yeah, the taxes are going to increase, and every department's going to fall into it, especially the rec department, the way it's going. So if we can keep it the same way, I'm all for it. I love it. Great facility, great for the city of Kinston, but if we look two years, three years, four years, five years down the road, can you guarantee me today that no more tax money from the city will go into the running of this business? Can you guarantee it? Would you be willing to put your salary on that? I can't because I'm retired. I'm 71 now. Anyway, I thank you for your time today. I know there's other people that want to talk. I appreciate y'all and what you do for our fine town. Thank you. I'm Joe Plasky. I live on 1802 Windsor Road, and I've been a citizen of Kenston since 1979, and have enjoyed those years here, and I've seen a lot happen, and try to interact with the government in every case I can. I'd like to make just a couple of points. One point is, when you say no tax dollars are going to be involved in this, that's not true, because part of his salary has got to be directed toward uh, that running this facility. Just as part of his salary is directed toward running electric cities and electrical system. So there is tax dollars in there. There will be part of his secretary, part of his staff will have to come in here and run it. He made the point that the government, the government will develop a marketing plan and implement a marketing plan for this facility. That indicates tax dollars being involved. Uh, let me change the subject for a minute. Uh, I've dealt with business for my whole working career, and when there's a, a business decision to be made, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Two of the ways of doing it are wishful thinking and hand-waving. The other way of doing it is with a well-thought-out, well-written, well-understood, and agreed-upon business plan. Now that business plan is what I want to mention to you tonight. I don't see that business plan in existence in this uh, uh, effort. That business plan would have a number of things in it. One thing that would be in there is a marketing plan. A marketing plan of how we're going to stabilize or increase the membership of this facility and therefore the revenue and, and 
If we're going to do that in a town where population is going down slowly but going down and population is aging. As you age, you have less, facility, less use for a facility like this. So that marketing plan has to be well thought out, written down, and understood. It can't be hand wove, waving like this. So that's the first thing that's in there. The second thing that was in there is competition. We have a number of uh, uh, co commercial uh, fitness facilities in town now. They're taxpayers. They're paying your taxes. And this is the argument came up when we built this thing. But uh, how are you going to deal with those taxpayers when you're going into competition directly with them? That's a, that's a real, real, real important question. The <clears throat> another thing that would be in that business plan is the liability uh, for running this place. The city has a certain level of liability and runs things a certain way. You know, it's one thing if, a, if the garbage truck wrecks, but it's another thing if somebody drowns out here at this pool. And that liability is part of your cost of running this facility. That needs to be ingrained in, into it. The, uh, when you look at maintenance, this is a, what, a $10 million facility? Normally, engineers, building engineers would tell you maybe it's a 1% cost to maintain a facility like this. What's 1% of $10 million? Where is that coming from? Whose pocket does that come out of? The, uh, uh, there's other things that need to be in that business plan. And one thing is, is and Tony started this, but I don't think it's complete or, or uh, certainly not not approved, but when you look at a business plan, a, any college graduate out of a business school will tell you that it has to have a cash flow analysis in there for 10 years. And what's more, that's not one cash flow analysis, but it's an optimistic one and a pessimistic one. And then there's an even. So that business plan would need that, and you can see the risk that's involved uh, down as you, as you uh, study this. Uh, the, so my point is to you, I don't think you're ready to make this decision whatsoever. That business plan needs to be put together and we need, don't need to be using hand waving, verbalization, uh, uh, fly off the seat of the pants, wishful thinking type, type things. Uh, there was a council in, 19, in the 1970s that sat in these chairs and they got egotistical and wishful thinking and got us into the electric business. The electric business has been a millstone around this town forever. Uh, it continues to be. Uh, if you don't make a good business decision when you're debating this point today or this uh, decision today, then you may have that millstone around our necks for the for a while until we get out of this place. Uh, I personally use it. I come out here and use it. But uh, when when I go to the, I use the gallops in the Kinsley Country Club. When I swim those like those laps in those two pools, there's no lifeguards. I'm on my own. When I come out here to swim, there's two lifeguards and nobody else in the pool but me. Uh, you know, there's a disconnect uh, between how this facility is set up and run and, and uh, uh, others. But the important thing is, please, please do not make this decision. Continue like you are until somebody produces a business plan that makes some sense and that these people all agree on. Thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to come in and talk to you. I know you got a tough job and uh, uh, I'm trying to give you some input and insight on how, how that job will be better if you, do, if you follow those things. I'd be glad to help you write a business plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blasky. I am Danny Rice, 1607 Sabre Drive, 
And I do have a prepared statement to help me stay under my uh, allocated three minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. I was thinking it was a three minute. Very good. Um, I stand behind the official statement of Woodman Life related to our contribution of the Woodman Community Center and the Lions Water Adventure Water Park to the city of Kinston. As one of many who helped make this project possible, I am very proud of the success we have experienced in becoming a true community center for our community and for our region. We have become the envy of many communities and were recognized yesterday in this very room by the governor's office as a model for all communities. The Women Community Center, the Women Community Center has become a hub for our activities, events, and meetings. It is a great economic partner with downtown revitalization, increased tourism, and the Wood Ducks in attracting people to Kinston. It has become the key amenity necessary for young people and industry to consider selecting Kinston as their home. City, county, regional, and state meetings have utilized the facility. It is a safe, family-oriented, and inclusive environment for children, young people, families, and seniors for multiple recreation and health-focused activities. It has become an employment opportunity for many in our area including over 100 young people each summer. Parrot Academy now has a home pool, making it possible for the Academy to host swim events. The Lions Water Adventure Water Park has brought hundreds of thousands of visitors into our area with a significant impact on economic development. Young people with disabilities and visual impairments have had their first water park experience. Partnerships have been forged that have enhanced most community nonprofits. A visual blight has now been turned into a welcoming view for visitors at a key entrance to our city. Lifestyles have been enhanced according to members who now experience better fitness with regular exercise. These are only a few benefits of the Women Community Center and Lions Water Adventure Water Park and show the significant impact they have had on the citizens of our area in its short existence. As a Kinston resident and one who chooses to remain a citizen of Kinston, I have spent my adult life sharing my personal time and resources in an effort to make our community a better place for all of our citizens. I never have and never will support any venture that would have a negative impact on our great city. I have full confidence in our city manager, our city council, our Parks and Recreation, and Wood Woodman Community Center staff to continue to operate these valuable facilities in an efficient and profitable manner. Thank you very much. Okay, I thought I was number eight. Okay. <laughs> Ella Clark, 2705 Hodges Road. I am a retiree of the city of Kinston, and I still work part-time for the Parks and Recreation Department. I am a member of Woodman Life. I'm also enjoying my experience out here at the Woodman. I'm not gonna talk about the budgets or all those things that you've read and looked up and you got all the numbers and everything perfectly. I'm gonna talk about having an experience. And you created this place, and the only thing I ever did was walk through and go upstairs to the office for Parks and Recreation. A couple of years ago, my husband passed, and I was not in the best of shape, and some of you will look at me now and say, you still are, but that's your thing. Um, last year, I decided to join. Well, I paid my membership fee, which was very small, in June, and I still kept passing by. So in January, I say time is up, and I decided to come in and start. Didn't start in January, I waited till February. I walked in here that day, and I have been inside this building five days a week since then. The first thing that changed was my attitude. 
And yes, I'm that senior citizen. I'm a county taxpayer and I'm a city taxpayer. So I think I fit in all of that. But with an attitude change first comes all those other things. And I come up here and I see senior citizens and that's what you see in the daytime because our kids are in school. So I'm enjoying something like I've never enjoyed before in my life. I have a personal trainer. And by the time my birthday comes in January and I'll be 70, there's gonna be a major change. I don't want to see this place closed, I really don't. Um, I have to pay taxes for everything that you say that we pay taxes for. Someone mentioned the utility bill. For the first time in my 17 years where I live, my utility bills are lower because of something that someone did in the city. I can't complain about where my bill is anymore. So all these other things are gonna come and they're gonna go. But I think that we need this. I was a part of Parks and Recreation for many years and I traveled with Bill Ellis all across the state. And they always talked about our parks here in Kinston. Now you can go places and they talk about this water park. Incidents and accidents do happen, not just here. They happen in every location. But thank God, it's not an everyday thing. We need this, we need it for our seniors, we need it for our children. So think a little beyond some of that other stuff, the stuff that you say has to take place. Think about us as citizens and what would we have if we didn't have this location. Thank you so much. Bill Ellis, 2106 Emerson Road, Kinston. Uh, it's hard for me to talk with my back to people, so I'm gonna wonder a minute, but I, 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 I prepared a speech, actually I've thrown it away about four times, and, and I'm gonna speak from the heart tonight to be real honest with you. Uh, this facility, we, we worked on it for about 10 years, and it exceeded all our expectations. The Woodman Life Insurance came to us with an idea that they wanted to build a community center for $1 million to do something good for communities in Eastern North Carolina. And this was their national model. They had looked, for years they had the little woodman block buildings across the country. And if you'll go down to inter any intersection in Eastern North Carolina, just about, you'll see a woodman community center, a little community center. And that model, they got where it didn't work. People didn't go have their birthday parties and family reunions in those little block buildings that were built in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So they wanted to build a modern facility. And they wanted to build a gymnasium with some offices. And I told them, I said, it won't work. It won't ever pay for itself. There's too many gymnasiums in a community. There's too many little office places. So what we need is to think big. And we got the committee of 100 and we got a lot of other people involved in this project and we started thinking big. What could we do to make it work? The first thing was to put an elevated walking track up so that senior citizens and folks didn't have to walk on the basketball courts. We wanted to put basketball courts in so we'd involve the whole community. We wanted to do a fitness center for the average person. We wanted to do meeting rooms so we could have meetings like this right here. We wanted to have a game room for teenagers. And we wanted to have a daycare for young mothers so that they could take their kids and come and work out and get healthy after they had kids and babies. And we put all that together. And then we said, you know, that won't pay for itself either. There's a lot of nice fitness areas and fitness centers. That may not pay for itself either. What do we need to do to make it pay for itself? And that was to build a water park. And we got together and Lions Industry for the Blind and the Lions Club, and I see a lot of Lions members in here tonight, they committed the, the piece that made this thing go. They committed over $2 million to this project, state and nationwide. And we became the most visually impaired, friendly water park in the world. We went uh, to Las Vegas and accepted an award that Dubai, the country Dubai wanted the year before we did, for their $45 million water park. We did it with a $2.1 million gift from the Lions Club and a lot of people with a lot of heart and a lot of vision. And that's the thing that's made this thing so successful. It, it's not the money. And we've got private company. We talk about government, how inefficient government is and all this. We got a private company that put $9,700,000 in our community with the goal that they wanted to go and do it in other places. 
they realize that that may be too big of a step for them. Maybe they need to think this. But for those six years this place has operated, we have made net profit, any way you want to talk about it, we made $2,465,000 more money than we spent in five and a half years. Let me say it one more time. $2,465,000 more than we spent. And then that allowed the woodman to start paying down the debt and they were gonna build this all over the country. Well, they had a different philosophy and, and, and lawsuits happened and things happened. And so they decided they're gonna get out of the community service business and go and give away American flags. They give away more American flags and more flag flagpoles than any organization in the world. And this company, as big as it is, chose to get it. They could take this facility, think about it. If somebody offered you a facility for $15 million, for $15 million, and said, we want to give it to you. And that facility made $2,465,000 the last five years. Would you take it? Is anybody here wouldn't take that facility? Okay, there's a few that wouldn't take it. I, I hope y'all are not my bankers. But uh, $2,465,000. Uh, but we, we got opportunity to take that. Let me, let me tell you, the city of Rocky Mount, is building a $34 million community center in downtown Rocky Mount with tax dollars. It was under construction right now. 18 gymnasiums in it. The city of Roseboro just built a $10,400,000 community center with tax dollars with two gymnasiums in it. The city of Smithfield, 12,500 residents, just built a $12.8 million community center with a water feature in it. The city of Wilson is building a $13.4 million community center right now with tax dollars. We got a private company that wants to give us a $15 million facility that we don't have to use tax dollars to pay for. Are we not the luckiest people in the world? I mean, it just fell on our life. So, this facility will break even or make money in its worst times. It's too good, it's too much there, and if we can take some of the money that we make every year and put it in a capital fund to pay for the future problems, and then take the extra money and put it in another fund to build a wave pool, to build a slide that's got seven people. How many people has come out here and sat in line for 20 minutes to get down to one slide we got? Can you imagine if we had two or three other slides where you didn't have a wait line, how many people we'd have here on a Saturday or a Sunday? We'd be parking at the mall. We wouldn't have to worry about what we're going to do with the mall because we use it for a parking lot. <laughs> but I, I love this facility. I promise you it will work. I've been the Parks and Rec director for 20 some years and I've seen it. I've lived it. I know the people that's helped. I know the people, and there's some value in Parks and Rec. There's, there's folks that's had lung transplants. They get up at six or four o'clock in the morning and come walk this track every morning and they couldn't do it somewhere. We've got my gym, we've got a lot of things for a lot of people, but this thing involves everybody in our community for your rich, poor, black, white, young, or old. And we're very fortunate to have it and thank you.
is very personal for me. So, Woodman Community Center in Lyme's Water Adventures, this is Rakita, how may I help you? That's my spiel every time I'm in this building. And I can only imagine that this facility was built with every one of us in mind, every one of us. So we have talked a lot tonight about numbers and budgets and how we're gonna afford to keep this place alive. But I have have heard only so much about families and communities, our children, and what this place means in reference to all of that. So for me, it's personal for two reasons, because I also work here. And I think I can speak for my coworkers, from the inside staff to our work part, that this place is important to us. The, for me, it's a part-time job. For other people, it's a part-time job. It's also some people's full-time job. So when you talk about closing the facility, you're talking about losing jobs. When you talk about closing, closing this facility, this is an asset to our community. This is a, an affordable place. I cannot stress that enough. It's an affordable place for parents and grandparents to bring their children, for me to bring my child. I am also a state employee and I work here for, for, for part time. So traveling distances, I myself would have to save money to go to King's Dominion or to go to the Outer Banks or to go anywhere. This is a facility that was built with every one of us in mind. It's a, an exercise facility. It's changed the lives of so many people right here in Kingston, North Carolina. We get people from all over coming here because it's affordable. So for me and my family and other people in this community, we need this place. We desperately need this place. And I am not in favor of closing this place. And I think that there are so many things that could be worked out if we take our time put our heads together because ultimately this is a great asset for Kingston, North Carolina and it needs to stay open because we need this place. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, uh, thank you all, City Council, um, City Manager, uh, City Attorney, uh, for creating this venue, uh, creating this opportunity for us to speak today and voice our concerns. Uh, I think it's great that we are all kind of sort of gathered here together uh, for such a day as this. Um, my name is Jordan Edwards. I live at 2111 Safari Drive here in Kingston, North Carolina, and I'm a proud citizen of Kingston. Um, understanding the problems or the issues that people see uh, with keeping this facility, whether they would open it or close it, uh, I don't think it's in a, I guess I don't think we're here to decide whether it's going to stay open or closed. Uh, we're deciding whether we're going to be proactive or we're going to be reactive. Or we're going to live in a proactive mindset or we're going to be in a reactive mindset. Uh, if we take the don donation from the Women's Center, uh, it will be debt free. Uh, again, we'll be debt free. There will be no uh, debt attached to it. Um, it appears as though we've been in a five year marriage with the Women's Center. Uh, and now the Women's Center wants to divorce. Uh, they're going to give us the house. Uh, so I don't have to ask the question, but if you're going to have a divorce, the divorce is imminent. You're, you're going to take the house. I know I would. Um, also, they've made it known that if at any time this becomes a burden, where they're, they're, they want to have to use tax dollars, they'll, they'll just close it. They will sell it. They will do something else with it. It will not be any burden on that. And I think that we can trust these individuals, we can trust our leaders at their word that it will not use tax dollars or our tax dollars. Um, it appears that people have talked about what or we're going to do with the expenses of the Women's Center. Normally, uh, I study business in college, and if you have expenses, they come from your property. And this document here has shown that in the last five years, there has been a profit 
and the profit is being able to take care of the expenses associated with the Whitman Center. So it is uh, my belief that we are still going to maintain a profit, and so we will be able to take care of all the expenses associated with the Whitman Center. I'm going to be a little selfish uh, because this has benefited me. The Whitman Center has benefited me. Uh, about six years ago, I was coming home from college. I played college football, and uh, I would work out at the Whitman Center, and I had an opportunity to do Zumba class here at the Whitman Center. <clears throat> Um, that Zumba class that I attended for the very first time is where I met my wife. I got married a couple of weeks ago, and I met her for the first time in that room up there. So, thank you so much. But not only that, it benefits our community, whether you are a young person, uh, a semi-young person, or a lot of seasoned young people, but it benefited us nevertheless. Uh, I think it's all about looking at the glass being half empty versus the glass being half full. Uh, I'm a very optimistic person. I love this city. I think that we have the opportunity to take over this Whitman Center um, and use it and have it to benefit our community. Again, uh, being proactive versus being reactive. And last but not least, I think the one thing that I still firmly believe in is that if we want to get youth back on track, if we want to get our community back on track, if we want to see the benefits of our labor, it takes an investment in our community. It takes investment. If you do not invest, I think you will perish. And so a few years ago, the woman is willing to pay off the $9 million of debt associated with this facility. They are investing in our community. I think we would be crazy not to take this free investment and use it for the benefit of not just our community, but communities around us. Thank you so very much. Mr. Josh Bass. How are y'all doing today? Uh, my name is Josh Bass. I'm the Aquatics Director. I heard the Lions Water Adventure. Um, one number that Maybe people haven't talked about recruiting, or kind of briefed on it, is the amount of employees that we provide uh, seasonal every summer here at the Water Park. From 15 to 16 year olds to 24 year olds. Um, the skills that they learn out here, especially at a place like the Water Park, with the amount of people that come through cannot be taught audibly in the classroom. It is life, uh, things you just learn in life. Uh, customer service, how to handle situations, right on the feet um, and not letting stress <clears throat> freeze them up when a situation happens. Um, many times something can happen at the water park and they just do it without thinking the proper way and that comes from training and knowing what they're getting into before they come back and work uh, out here at the water park or any other facilities um, in the regular park. Um, one thing that I have all the time, phone calls are calls from internships, colleges and jobs that the lifeguards have put me down as a reference. And the reason they call me is not because it's just their only job, it's because they understand the importance of CPR, first aid skills, as well as customer service skills and being coming to work, even when you don't want to come to work, they learn they need to be here. Um, not only going from uh, the employees that we employ, but also uh, we do a lot of big events at Deaf and Water Park from all over North Carolina. Just Friday, we have the uh, Deaf and Blind organization that we partner with, Lungs Industry for Blind. Um, and they came out, taught staff basic sign language for emergencies and um, basic signs like that that everyone needs to know, especially if you're working with the public. Because um, if y'all been here, because I've been out there for five years, I mean, stuff just comes up. Non inspected, fully supervised, stuff just happens. And little things like that you can't teach. Um, they also brought out, I think they had 12 or 11 other organizations for the Deaf and Blind North Carolina came out. They had a great time. We're already talking to Stephanie Scott. We're going to be doing it again next year. She couldn't have been happier uh, with what we did. Um, and also Saturday, uh, the situation in Violet Hospital came out of the booth and pretty much just gave our information on uh, water safety. Because of the situation that happened in Greenville a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I met the mom and she was so grateful for us to give them the opportunity to just express the importance of water safety. And that's not just at the water park, that's anywhere that there uh, could be a, a certain life situation. Um, and also, the, 
best three or four years, I believe, we had the world's largest swim lesson. That's something that, again, promotes water safety. And we've been really uh, strongly in that cause. Um, what it is is everybody in the United States, they'll pick the same time and they'll try to pass or get the world's largest swim or get the Guinness World Record for the amount of kids that learn some sort of basic swim skills um, at that time that they don't even have to pay for. They just come. Um, <clears throat> as well as the other events that we have, such as you know, the exclusions that we have on Saturday nights. That's a perfect opportunity for companies and any kind of organization to come out and enjoy the water park with a full staff, and then to have time to you know, have a good camaraderie with their staff, as well as their family, and have a good time and know that they're safe. Um, I just, yeah, I'm gonna make it brief. I just wanted to let you know, you saw a few of them that were standing out here um, not too long ago. But the amount of 150 employees that we employ every summer, and that's just at the water park, that's not even including the 20 something that's in here, that we provide every year. And you know, it gives them an opportunity to put something on their resume for when they do start applying for colleges or internships or other jobs that you just can't get at other places just because the importance of what they know that their, their job is out there. And, um, and that's one thing I do take pride in. And I hope y'all do consider that as the amount of jobs that would be lost if we Sacrifice this place. Right? That's all I have to say. City Councilman, um, City Attorney, Mr. Seegers, thank you for all. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you for having the. Uh, this public forum, as you know, I was the advocate um, last week for this public forum because I felt like we all need to know the facts. And um, I know a lot of a lot of what's in here, a lot of the people that are here now are, are emotionally tied to the center, um, and I, I I like the center. I think it's great. Um, my my concerns are not emotionally based. My, my concerns are physically based. Um, and I want to make sure that we all had, um, you said you only made 25 copies of the financials. Um, is there any way we can put that on the website so we can all yes, enjoy that? Or we can go make copies now. I don't know that I can get that many made, but I'll make sure they're up on the website. Okay, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, another concern that I have is uh, sharing the liability. We don't have, we're not gonna be able to share the liability with the Woodman anymore. We just had a got through with a lawsuit, I understand, a ten million dollar uh, settlement. But after after the Woodman signed this over, if that's even legal, um, then that liability will not be shared. And I also question um, the profitability because number one, the government's not in the business of making a profit. The private sector is in the business of making a profit. And uh, we all remember all too well that um, a lot of uh, gym owners and water park owners around here uh, were kind of upset when the woodman decided to do this and the city and the county threw in with them for the tune of a million dollars of uh, taxpayer dollars. We really had no choice as taxpayers whether, whether or not we were going to um, put into it. There was no public forum. It was just decided for us. So I'm sure that um, you, got, you guys are going to make a good decision. Um, decision that you have to make. Um, but I remind you again that you are stewards of our taxpayer dollars and you are stewards of our property. All of it. I grew up in Kingston. I'm a resident here since 1963. I was born in 1963 in this town. Uh, I grew up at Emma Webb Water Park. I mean, Emma Webb Water Park. Emma Webb Pool. Uh, um, you know, I, uh, I'm a member now, not of this gym, but of another gym, of True Fit. Um, I, you know, I think it's a great thing. I don't think the city needs to operate it. Uh, if the city does wind up with this property, I really believe the city should uh, hand it over to a private entity and let them operate it. So that's all I have to say, but I thank you for having this public forum. I really do, uh, sincerely. And I think that's what was needed. Thank you.
I'm Jim Perry, I live at 3504 Lakeview Trail. Um, I'm supportive of this facility and of the people who work here and of the intent of those who brought it to our community. I have no desire to see this facility close. I don't have any ill will towards anyone. I don't believe that everyone in our community can read financial statements, but that's fairly common. I can probably count on one, definitely two hands, the number of people in this room who have really read and understand the contractual agreements with the women as well as the financial statements. They're complicated, they're convoluted. Uh, there's intermingling of the Whitman Foundation Funds, the Whitman Community Center, and the City of Kinston. I want the people of our community to continue to enjoy this center with the same contractual protections they have today. I want them protected from operational losses. I want them protected from expensive future capital repairs like you currently face it in the web. I want them to have the, projection, the protections that were promised to them contractually. When this project was first introduced, we were told the Woodman uh, would pay all operational losses. Then it was changed, and we had to pay up to $50,000 of operational losses per year. We were never responsible. net profit of $2.4 million. Some people in this room know that on page six, paragraph B of the contract with the Whitman Foundation, it requires that the city include debt service in the operations budget. So to circulate a document not indicative of this expense would not represent net profit. Since 2013, the interest on the debt service would have reduced your 2.4 million by roughly 2.3 million. And I do have the figures. They're posted on the Secretary of State's website, like all charities, and you can see the audited financial statements of the Women Foundation. I also would like for you to explain to the people of our community that the water park is not subject to the termination provision. It was obtained in part with a $500,000 Park and Recreation Trust Fund grant obtained by Lenore County. The city of Kinston currently pays for employees, their health insurance, and funds their retirement, and these employees are not charged to the Woodland Community Center. This expense is projected to be about $155,000 per year uh, going forward. The Woodman Foundation shows expenses for capital repairs ranging from $130,000 to $140,000 and marketing expenses of $50,000 to $70,000 in their most recent 2016 and 2015 audits. You do not pay these expenses today, but you will in the future. And regarding not spending any tax dollars on the Woodman Center, you do it today. Contractually, you're obligated to provide contributed personnel. You have city employees that work here that you pay with tax dollars today to work in the Woodman facility and contractually you're not allowed to charge that to the Woodman Community Center. It's very confusing all the different financial buckets. Again, no desire to see the facility close, but I want you guys to get the best deal that you can for our citizens going forward, the members of our communities. We've got 23 years of, protect, of protections going forward. Why would we give these up? We don't want anything to close. Everyone loves us. I, I, I haven't met anyone who said, I don't love the Woodman Community Center or it's ugly or we don't want it here. I just want protections for the people, for the people of our community. You have leverage. If the Woodman decided to close the facility, I estimate they'd have to pay back $1.8 million. That's a combination of uh, payments to Lenore County, the city of Kinston, and repaying the Parks and Recreation Touch Fund grant if they're allowed to do that. But again, the termination provision does not apply to the water park. Please have the courage to understand all of the information and then to protect the people of our community. Lenore County property taxes are in the 12th highest in the state, and the city of Kinston was 29 out of over 500 the last time I looked. We are losing population. This is a corporation with 11 billion in assets. 
and we don't want them to be able to renege on a promise to the people of our community. We just ask you to stand up for us. We ask you to be on the side of the citizens of our, our community versus a large corporation. I will say that future boards cannot be bound by the decision of the current board. So the city council may have the best intentions of the world of saying, we're not going to use taxpayer dollars. You can say, hey, we will promise everyone that, but you can't bind future boards. And whoever's in that seat can make a different decision. The only protections you can give them is a contract offering those protections today. Your intentions will not protect them. And let's say I'm wrong. And these audited financial statements that are posted on the Secretary of State's website are wrong regarding the debt service. Let's say it did make $2.4 million. If that's the case, why would the women be concerned about continuing these protections for us that keep us from losing more than $50,000 per year going forward? Why would there be any concern about that if it does produce that much profit? Additionally, today, any capital repair that takes place out there in excess of $5,000, they have to pick it up. That's what we see on their audited financial statements. You don't see those on what you have. You don't see contributed personnel on what you have. You don't see those marketing expenses on what you have. I just ask that you look at all information. I think I lost the mic here. I just ask that you look at all information and consider all of the facts when making your decision. I'm not asking you to let the women close. I'm asking you to fight for the citizens and get the best deal that our community deserves. You are experiencing decline in members. You've declined 29.4% since 2014. Water park revenue has declined by 48.3% since 2013. And membership revenue has declined by 39.3% since 2013. They're downward trends. Do I think you could do some things better? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I agree with 90, 95% of what Tony said earlier. It makes a lot of sense. This is complicated. It is an emotional decision for some. Certainly is for Bill. It, it was a capstone of, of his career. It's a fantastic facility. He did a great job with it here. Um, I have no personal animosity toward Bill or Danny or, or anyone else. Bill gave me one of my first jobs. I was a, a lifeguard at, at uh, Emma Webb and, and Holloway. So I, I too have worked in the recreation department. I just want the best deal we can have for our citizens and I want us to be protected. And I want somebody to fight for us. Thank you for your time. Allow me to tell everyone thank you for coming out tonight and for sharing. Whether you shared your personal feelings of how the Women's Center has impacted you and your family, whether it is how it impacts this community, the wisdom and the power and the suggestions of strategic planning, of the charge of the council to consider all factors that without question, and everyone has conveyed this beautifully, that no one wants to see this center close. And on behalf of our mayor, this council, we can't thank you enough for coming out and allowing your voices to be heard because that, I mean, that's what matters. And I just charge you and, and I don't know what to say, but like I said, consider, continue to share your voices. You continue to have those meaningful conversations, reach out to the council members, most importantly, continue to pray. <clears throat> there is no secret, this is an extremely hard decision to make. 
But I think when we look around this room this afternoon, this evening, that it's going to take all of us being willing to listen to each other in so much as we can make the best decision for this community. And that we have proven tonight that we can agree to disagree, but there is value in what everyone, everything that everyone has to say. If the council has anything we ask that you share before we adjourn the meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. I don't have a gap, so I'll just say. <laughs> <laughs>